Hello, everybody. We are live. Um, I I'm trying to to do better with my lighting for the for the uh camera here, which hmm, that backlight might be a little much. Hold on, I'm gonna adjust it. It looks good. You're well lit. Yeah, I I just it was looking a little weirdly like kind of foggy there that's better okay I was getting like a glare on the lens eh. mm. just this camera it's one of those like webcams it's on like a little stem so like no matter anytime I just gently move it or even like go away from the camera for a bit and come back it's always just slightly out of frame that's annoying all right so you had good news which I think let's let's start with that um i got approved for my apartment but well for the room in an apartment that i wanted but i like just to have roommates um who i really vibe with and we met up the other day and it was really great and i talked to the landlord today and it looks like it's all gonna go through so i'm gonna need to fight for a little bit but i'm excited to get out of this basement <laughs> nice. that I've been in for two years. Yeah, that's that's always mm -hmm. nice to actually be with people. Um, on the opposite yeah. end, in terms of roommates, my roommate has COVID. Oh, no! Yeah, Corey got COVID from work. So sorry about that. Um, the thing is, oh, so he, we're all vaccinated. Um, so this yeah. is a breakthrough case for him. Uh, the thing is, he got the Pfizer vaccine like quite a while ago so um mm -hmm. it might be because it's been a while and it's uh, like everything i've seen like the pfizer is a lot weaker against the delta variant so it hit him pretty hard he's had a really bad cough um but by all accounts it's still a mild case so that's good mm -hmm. um and then coco and i we both got the moderna vaccine a lot more recently so we've been okay. We're, we have like very, very mild symptoms. I've been kind of like congested and like a lot of brain fog, but so far okay. Yeah. Still, it's been it's been rough the last like week or so. Oh, I'm so sorry. On the but side also, of good news, um, um, I finally I finally transplanted the tree that I've been keeping alive in my room ever since the friggin' idiots. We hired to mow our lawn, mowed it down like over a year ago. Um, I was able to oh, get that's it great news. growing back. It is it is officially back outside. Uh, it, it rained really hard right after I transplanted it, so probably good that it's getting water. I, I hope it's okay, because it's, it's not a very large tree yet. Um, but, you know, fingers crossed that it survives through the winter. Uh. I my plant just sprouted a new little baby out of the root system. I'm really excited. It was a very momentous moment because I definitely thought she was dying, but she is thriving. Nice. What kind of yeah. a plant is it? Um, what is it called? Uh, viney, the viney one. The... Oh my gosh. In my head is philodendron, which is not right, but it does start with a P. Hmm. I, think. I don't honestly know plants that I well. Plant name. I'm gonna find it. Also, I definitely um, went to the bookstore the other day and tried to buy like $150 worth of books and then had to force myself to only buy two. And it was honestly really devastating. It was a really sad moment. I think part of it is just having the books like i think that i just like to collect books like i'm reading the one that the ones that i bought but it's still just like uh, i love having them I to read when i'm ready to read them yeah same i books are one where i always go a little too hard because like they're never that expensive and it it's always like mm -hmm. something you know you're going to be able to spend many hours on so it feels like it's really great value for your money but then it's like at a certain point you gotta you gotta pace yourself <clears throat> mm. 
the book I just got is actually really good. I had this, maybe it is a philodendron. Mm. I don't know. It's like a viney plant. They're supposed to like live forever, but I've been growing it since somebody gave me a, a start. And so it's been a long journey, me and this plant, because I'm not very good with plants. So. Plants are hard. Um, I'm, I'm lucky enough, the, the tree, really it's a lemon tree. And especially in this environment, they're they're incredibly sturdy and hardy uh, plants. So it, it's thankfully weathered a lot of pretty harsh harsh times. I also didn't um, didn't end up getting a chance to read the rules for that other game. That's unfortunately. Okay. But I'll do it before next week. So yeah yeah it's it's like it's not that complicated because on your turn you basically just pick an action do the action and then decide what resource you're gonna get uh, the resources you can make but okay. there's like a hun there's like a bunch of cards and they're all different and like how they say what the action is it's like a lot of symbology where it's like it, it all is intuitive once you understand what the symbols are, but, like, just getting those is, like, the main thing to learning it. And it's it'd be kind of tricky mm. to do that um, without being able to, like, directly show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah I'll, do, I'll uh, definitely check it out because I'm curious. Yeah, it's it's sure. a bit more in depth, but it's still a fairly light game. the The big complexity to it is just like what set of cards you end up with when you set it up. Hmm. Hmm. What am I gonna do? Um. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go for that. We're gonna get be risky. Ooh. I um also maybe got some answers with my medical stuff that's been going on. Oh, with that's my health good. stuff. Uh finally talked to an allergist. And she thinks that my mast cells, which are the histamine producing cells, are overreactive, um, basically. And that I am essentially having an allergic reaction to heat, stress, um, cold, <laughs> anything that touches my skin, um, <laughs> basically everything in my environment, which is, it's been, but apparently it also like is a big contributor to anxiety. So, mm -hmm. or like anxiety is a big symptom of if the mast cells like overproduce in your brain, like it can make you anxious and like even paranoid and stuff. So. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. I don't know for sure. We just did a bunch of tests. But I drew seven vials of blood Ooh. yesterday. Yeah, I felt so sick all day. And then I was like, am I losing my sense of smell? Like, I kind of convinced myself I had COVID for a minute, but I don't think I do. Oh, yeah, that's the big thing with it for Corey is, like, he's got a really bad cough, but then also... He has no sense of taste or smell right now. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people, or I guess with Delta, though, they were saying that it's, like, less likely that you'll actually lose your sense of taste and smell. Okay. So, I don't know, um, obviously, but Brooke got it, and she definitely lost her sense of um, taste. And smell, or it seems like. Hmm. Mm. But also, Kaiser just sent out a letter that they're thinking that everybody is going to be able to get another booster in um, October. Hmm. So, yeah, I only got good. vaccinated in like June, so I'm gonna have to wait till like at least the beginning of next year to get the booster. Yeah, I don't remember when I got vaccinated. I have my vaccination card somewhere, it wasn't like super early. Um, 
Say April? Mm. I don't know. Now I'm curious. Yeah, we yeah, we didn't really put it off so much as um it, w it was just kind of difficult to figure out the information for quite a while. I was keeping on top of it. Um, but yeah, it's it was not crowded in any kind of way, because where I'm at, most people are choosing not to, which is frustrating. Yeah. April I got it in. I guess not that long ago. I don't know. I've been going out more, which is making me, I mean, that's, it's not great for my anxiety as far as, like, being afraid that I'm going to, you know, catch the virus, but, um, for, like, social brain. Yeah. Making new friends. That's always a weird experience. Yeah. Getting to know people. I don't, I have not met anyone, like, new in person in, like, I don't know, several years, honestly. Um, I mean, I just, like, it took, like, an actual concerted effort for me to, like, actually meet people. Like, I got on dating apps with, like, no intention to date, but, which is always such a strange thing, like, because people don't know what your expectations are, really. And then I'm like, uh, I guess I could, like, be open to dating, but it's not really at all what I'm looking for or, like, even something that I want, necessarily. Um, yeah. So. I mean, now they they advertise a lot of dating apps as also being just a social platform, basically. And I feel like that's maybe irresponsible of at least the apps, considering how much harassment a lot of people will end up with if they're not looking to uh, date on a platform like that. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I feel like I've, like, now that I've used, like, a few of them, I kind of have, like, opinion, a lot of opinions about them. Um, as far as, like, what you're looking for. Uh, Hinge, actually, I like a lot more than I thought I would. It's newer, so there's not, like, a ton of people on it, but it's, like, what it kind of has going for it. Um, because it's just, like, it really gives you the opportunity to, like, get to know people. And it's, like, it's very easy and, like, straightforward. Um, I just feel like I've, like, talked to a lot of people on there. And the intention in it, like, they say, they advertise it as, like, the app designed to be deleted or whatever. So, like, the idea is that you're supposed to, like, meet somebody that you'll fall for. Um, but that's, like, it's more just, like, a place where people actually, like, want to get to know each other. I think that's what I appreciate about it. Right, yeah. I... Yeah, I, I only ever really did dating apps, like, 2015. I used OkCupid a lot, if just because it was the only, like, genuinely free one that you could get, for the most part. Yeah. Like, some of them were, like, free to start, but then they would have so many, like, d different hidden fees, or, like, to access a lot of the features that you'd want to access, you'd have to pay. Um... I don't know. I, I always ended up finding it kind of disappointing because maybe it was just the, the area I was in or whatever, but, like, the, the people I ended up meeting were all very, very introverted. And mm -hmm. it, what that ended up meaning is that any conversation I had, there would be so much, like, basically pressure on me to actually keep it going if I wanted to actually continue talking with someone and at a certain point, I just got fed up, and I was just like, no. Like, why do I always have to put in so much work in in these conversations? If they really want to talk to me, then, like, they can put in some work, too. And it, no one ever did, so. I definitely get that. I never liked the OkCupid. I like the one that I used a lot when I was first using, like, years and years ago um, as well. 
yeah, it felt like very much the same way. Or like, I don't know, I just like understand the expectations. I often don't know really what the expectations are with things like that. Um, so just a lot of confusion on my part, but like, uh, I don't know. I, it's, it's so interesting. Cause like it always, like the way that people get to know each other is so counter to the way that I get to know people. And so it's like on these dating app, well on hinge, cause Tinder was bullshit. Uh, mm, yeah. I, you know, a lot of people start with like, well, there's like questions in your pro people can answer or whatever, and that's like a good starter. Although I'm so sick of answering what's your favorite horror movie. I should never have put that in there. Um, what do you say? But uh, uh, I just I don't have a favorite. I just talk about the ones that I like a lot, but mostly just like creature features. Um, Fair. And uh, right. Well, I mean, like, Jennifer's body is up there. It's a lot of, like, what have I seen recently? Because I see, I watch so much horror. I don't really have, like, a very favorite. Jennifer's um, body is a really I good like one. More, I, I never gave it a so chance good. because the the marketing was so awful. It made it seem like it was some, like, weird, like, super mm -hmm. horny high school thing. But then, like, when you actually see it, it's like, oh, no, this is, like, a really interesting... um just a really really interesting uh uh i can't think of the words but i don't know i i i enjoy it a great deal um yeah coco got me into it cuz coco always loved it since it came out and uh mm -hmm. there are there are aspects that are a little wonky to me i mean mainly the thing that we always kind of um, have friction over is the slang in the movie, because Coco thinks that it's it's the way Coco puts it, which I I can agree with now. We we've kind of come to an agreement on this at this point is that the slang in it is not slang anybody ever really used, but it's sort of the slang that would develop in an isolated small town community. That is mm -hmm. still believable, but like. Not exactly the same. It does get kind of hello fellow kids at some points with that, but like it's not terrible about it. And that's that's just kind of Diablo Cody's writing style in general. Is it kind of has that vibe? Yeah, absolutely. Did you know, like, you mean? Um, I don't know. I liked it. I think that it was just it just feels like a stylistic choice to me. Um, and I appreciate it for that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I like Jennifer's body. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, often like people, I, I don't get the small talk thing and I guess I'm like not good at, I just, I, uh, I just have a lot of to say about a lot of things but small talk like has never really made a lot of sense to me so it's hard for me to like keep that going um so if that's all that like someone has to offer or they're only like giving like two word responses i just have nothing to say yeah yeah it, it's pretty much just like there needs to be equal effort on both sides if any kind of relationship whether platonic or romantic is going to work out and in my experience with dating apps, it's just far too many people who are not looking to put in any kind of effort and not to begrudge them and say, like, that's, well, that's why your dating life's not working out and you're on the app, but it's like, I mean, I don't know. It it definitely seems like, I, I, I doubt they are super, um, super social outside of the app if that's the way that they they socialize. Yeah, I mean, which is fine. I'm not very, I'm not social outside, or I wasn't social outside of the app. Like, that, this is, like, a very new thing for me, even, which, like, I think comes across in just different ways, because I, like, do tend to have a lot to say. Because, like, a lot of the topics that are coming up are, like, things that I've thought about for a long time and have a lot of opinions on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, my thing has always been, I can talk for, um, 
I can just talk at end about pretty much anything, but uh, I I just need to get the conversation started. Once I get onto a topic, mm -hmm. everything's good. But it's like getting to a topic is always the kind of sticking point for me. Yeah, and maybe that's what I was trying to say. Like, it's hard to find a topic to talk about. It's like, I don't know. And also, like, I think, like, people do get overwhelmed sometimes. Like, get overwhelmed. Like, there was somebody that I was talking about vampires with, which was probably just a bad, bad move to even bring into... Um, but on my part, because I have so much to say and so many thoughts about vampires, um, and after I sent them basically an essay length message about vampires, they just never responded. Oh no, like, that's asked. that's always the worst. Is anytime you send somebody a really long message that you feel very strongly about, and then they never respond, or their response is just like, just like underwhelming, just like a sure. They, they have yeah. nothing to contribute. I guess that then it's like, you know, that um, you're just not someone we're, like that's going to be on the same page as you to have a, a good conversation with. Mm -hmm. It's not fair to discount them for everything because they don't want to talk about the one thing. But like, I don't know. I'm like game to talk about whatever. So if somebody did that to me, I'd be very excited. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, even if it's a topic I don't know anything but, um, about, then that's just, you can have a conversation learning about it. Like, there's so much uh, out there to talk about. It's fun to see people get passionate about the things they care about. Wait, no, 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 I gotta... You gotta play a card first. Right. I still have... The, I did that. The first game I played of this on here is still going because I'm doing it asynchronous. And so, it, because it's a full three-round game and we each take, like, maybe two turns a day, we're still in the first round of it. Oh, my God. It's wild. I'm I'm doubling up. Double wager. I didn't know you could do that. You can. You can go up to a triple wager if you're really confident. And it's uh the first Dang. wager is times two, second one's times three, and third one is times four. Wow. You gotta be pretty whoa, whoa, whoa. confident to pull that one though. Because again, if you get into the negatives, it will, um, it will multiply that negative instead. E. Sorry. Hmm. Gosh, that apple was so good. I was really digging on Pink Ladies this summer, but now it's all about the Envy apple. Mm. So we're coming into apple season, so I'm going to be just all the varieties. Yeah. I I should get some apples for, like, pie or something. I I don't do very much just, like, fresh fruit because I never go through it fast enough. Mm -hmm. I only... Apples and bananas are all the fresh fruit I keep around. Um but I eat them every day, so. Yeah. Yeah, bana I used to get bananas all the time because there's always the backup if you don't eat them fast enough of banana bread. Mm hmm I haven't made banana bread in forever. I should do that sometime soon. We've just, because of the pandemic, we've been getting um, grocery pickup, and so we've been in a good way, a lot less impulsive about what we get, but then also it means that when I 
I feel less inspired because I'm just going and searching up the things we always get rather than seeing like, oh, hey, there's a thing from a recipe I haven't done in a while. Maybe I should do that recipe. So I've, I'm in kind of a rut when it comes to food. Um, just, I eat them every day, but I just eat them in my oatmeal, and I like to, like, cook them down in the oatmeal, so then I don't add sugar later. Oh, yeah. I need to do more oatmeal, too. I always get, I, I do the, like, um, steel-cut oats that take, like, half an hour, but, like, it's always such a good, like, filling meal. Love oatmeal. I literally eat it every day. I make it exactly the same way <laughs> every single morning it's like my favorite meal i wait for it or i like spend or i wait for excited for it every single day yeah it's really it's good great. for you and if you do it right it's delicious mm -hmm. i started putting protein powder in it um because my doctor told me that i wasn't getting enough nutrients uh and so it's really filling. It actually like keeps me full for quite a few hours, which is awesome. Nice. Um, and then I get 20 grams of protein in the morning, which is great. Uh, yeah, Pro I, I've been having trouble getting a protein power because I always do it as like a shake, but then it's like, it's kind of unpalatable at a certain point. Yeah, I can't, I can't with the shakes. <sighs> I could I used to be able to do them when they were like chocolate, but then at one point um I would order the specific brand uh cuz I couldn't get anywhere near here that I liked on Amazon and one time they accidentally sent me the vanilla flavor and I was like I can probably tolerate that. That's can't be that bad. Oh man, it was it was so awful and it just really turned me off that entire brand of powder. And then, oh. and I don't like any of the other ones as much because they're all too sweet. That was I like that one because it had like a, a like kind of pleasant bitterness to it. And now it's like, ugh, mm. I just I can't do it. I can't eat. Um, I don't like most protein powders, uh, actually. And I'm really picky about like the sugars that they use or like if they. I have stevia. I don't like stevia at all. But um, this one is kind of okay. I can't do chocolate because uh, it triggers my acid reflux. But um, the vanilla garden of life, which is a vegan one, because I can't do dairy either. Um, it's pretty good, actually. I don't know. It works really well for my. Anyway. Yeah, I. Yeah, I don't like stevia either. <laughs> Although I, I do a lot of um, the new Gatorade product, Bolt 24, which is basically just watermelon juice with, like, added salt and, like, vitamins. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like it if just because it has a very minimal amount of sugar as far as bottled sugar drinks go. It, it's only 8 grams of sugar, which isn't terrible. But it is stevia. It's like actual cane sugar, but then also stevia, and I yeah, the stevia gives it a kind of gross edge. Yeah, I just don't like. There's something. I mean, I think that the one that I've been eating is has stevia, but um, no, I think just in the oatmeal with like bananas and blueberries, it like becomes a lot more palatable. You know how they have the magic spoon? I don't know if you've seen that. It's still kind of niche. But the like the magic spoon se brand cereal mm -hmm. where it's like sugar-free, gluten-free, all all of that. No, I don't know anything about it. Oh yeah, it gets uh they do a lot of ads on Instagram, I guess. It's really expensive. It's like 10 bucks for like a small box of cereal, but it's it's basically emulating oh. classic breakfast cereals, but it's like no anything that will mess with a sensitive digestion. 
Um, I what I'd love to see them do is like a version of that that is the uh the instant oatmeal that had the dinosaur egg in them. Oh yeah. Right. I I try that out because like I I will not do it right now because it's like just pure sugar glop and I can guarantee I would not be able to finish a bowl of that but like something uh, something about the novelty of the little melting egg with the little candy pieces was just <laughs> so so entertaining. Protein powder is so expensive too. Yeah, that's the other big thing is like they're, they're so expensive and because they're a supplement, there's no real guarantee that their advertising on it is accurate at all. Um, mm -hmm. And like even then, it's like I don't even know really what I should be getting. From what I understand, you should try and just get your protein from your actual diet, which I aim for, but then... Eh. It's tricky because my appetite really is not always big enough. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I remember um, reading a lot of, or reading and watching like a bunch of bodybuilding stuff, and they're like, get 30 grams of carb and 50 grams of, or no, 30 grams of protein, 50 grams of carb. I don't remember, those might be backwards, uh, per meal. And I was like, so that would be like five eggs in a meal and I'm just like that's too much I can do like three five at, at five it's like after you get halfway through it's just like this is this is just a chore yeah I've been using this calorie counting app because I'm trying to track my macros which can be kind of dangerous for me but I actually have had like a lot of uh, success with it um because I have high cholesterol so I'm trying to like keep a how much sodium and fat I'm in, like intaking. Um, I eat so much fiber and carbs. It's like kind of out of hand. <laughs> I mean, fiber isn't too bad. Carbs can get pretty out of hand pretty quick. Well, I have digestive issues too, so like too much fiber I think is mm. not great for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's always the thing is whatever. So the sodium thing. Sodium, yeah. Well, sodium is also like, like genetic. Like our family is very predisposed to high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, my cholesterol is like pretty, pretty high too. And I'm like pretty young of high cholesterol. It's lower, a lot lower now than it was last time I got it checked, but like it's still much farther up there than I'm comfortable with it being. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. I gotta start thinking about it now. Um, but actually, like keeping my fat down hasn't been that ba bad. But it's mostly because I just eat the same thing every day. Because it's just like easier than thinking about food all the time. And like I like food fine, but um, most of it really upsets my stomach. I don't have a huge appetite since I quit smoking weed, and uh just as easier to like stay within the like limits that I want to stay in also my calcium came back really high from the test I did the other day that was really weird because mm. I feel like I'm not I don't that much calcium hmm yeah weird Ugh. I I always feel weird about like health and diet stuff because I'm so not careful about most of that like the most I do is I try and eat some like vegetables when I can remember to and try not to do too much sugar but then like we eat so much fast food living here because yeah. I'll just get I'll just be really busy and then I get at the end of the day it's like I could cook a meal and it would be delicious and much healthier but I don't have any energy to do that so let's just get Taco Bell again I definitely get that. Like, I have no, I mean, so much of this, like, that I'm putting into being mindful of what I'm consuming is because of my, like, massive health anxiety that I've developed. Um, and 
and also because like it goes both ways because I couldn't eat anything for a long time and I lost a lot of weight really fast and it, I, you, I could feel it in my body and then I just felt like I wasn't like um getting enough nutrients um, and so this is kind of me trying to get that back mm. and figure out how to find a balance for myself because I would like to have I would like to feel healthy I don't know I don't even know if it's possible I just kind of feel sick all the time <laughs> like that's the thing it's like I think that a lot of the like time that I spent smoking weed was just masking um a lot of like chronic uh, pain and illness that yeah. I now have to like actually figure out <laughs> yeah I, I mean, I, that was always my experience with it, too. When I was living in Washington, it was it was really fun, but then it's also just kind of a way to ignore your problems for quite a while. Like, we were... When I was living in Vancouver, Coco and I were really broke, but we would still, like... Because it was legal, and you could just go to a store and get it, so... We would smoke because it was something fun to do, but then we would basically just, as soon as we were both off work, smoke and just, like, just, like, be high our entire free time and never really do anything. Mm -hmm. And so, like, it, I don't know, it was, it was just more of an escape from reality than anything, which isn't necessarily bad. Like, we weren't in super dire straits, but, uh... Yeah, it was it, it was rough and we honestly probably could have spent, like actually saved that money and been in a much better position, but it it was always there and it was just cheap enough. Mm. And it's easy to keep doing. I don't know. I don't for me, I was really scared to quit, but then my anxiety got the better of me, so Yeah, well, especially in Washington really where it's like well, whatever is happening with my throat started yeah, it's like, it, there it's like, it's legal, and a lot of people do it, so it's like, even if people aren't pressuring, like, overtly, there's always that kind of, like, underlying pressure. Mm. It's not even so much that I feel a pressure, it just, like, it definitely helps me to, like, avoid all of my, like... I think I did use it to self-medicate for a very long time um, for problems I think I like didn't wasn't even fully cognizant I was experiencing um, and when it turned on me and I couldn't take it any or I couldn't use it anymore I kind of just have to learn how to like live in my body and what it feels like to live in my body which is kind of a scary thing yeah it for a decade plus Although I'm getting more used to it now, but it's like it is still very uncomfortable. Like it's weird that I get loose symptoms every single day. Um, mm. Not continuing throughout the day, just like midday to the end of the day, I'll feel like I'm like developing the flu. Like my throat gets really sore, my nose gets stuffed up, my head gets really foggy. Um, and then, I mean, there's things that I can do to help myself, but I kind of just have to wait it out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I've like I don't, I I feel like I've always had a very weird relationship with health if just because like since at least like high school when we were living with mom there was I was like sick so often that I kind of just got so used to it that I'm I'm not great at recognizing when there's something up with my health. I'm like I'm super yeah. I'm super tolerant of like mild illnesses so it takes quite a lot for me to be like okay there's actually something wrong with me when like I am sick I think that that was also my experience for a very long time um because yeah I felt like living with mom in high school I just was always sick and yeah you really do get used to what that feels like um and it's hard to know like if you're 
actually sick or like you're okay. But I think what happened is because I had been so consistently high for so long, um, I really thought that that those feelings were associated more with the smoking than they were with just something that's normal for me. So I kind of have, yeah, like have to relearn what it feels like. Like, oh, this is probably just a normal thing that I've been experiencing for a really long time. I just can't remember because I haven't experienced it like this in a de decade, like without any kind of like relief. Yeah, exactly. Or like I feel a lot of tension in my body. That's like really not great. <laughs> um, it's kind of fascinating. Like on the other side, it's like kind of interesting because know i'd like to know what's going on our family is just kind of sickly though not even sickly but like there's just like some weird stuff Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm like at least chronic fatigue is something that yeah many of us deal with yeah definitely i mean that's the big thing is that none of us have like any um "Quote unquote severe illnesses, but we all have a variety of conditions that make um that make things just generally a little more miserable." Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think as I get older, and those things are kind of catching up to me, and I'm still working in a job that's like too, too actually too physically demanding for me and the way that my body works um i am like really really starting to see the repercussions of not like dealing with any of that yeah i it's just weird it's a hard thing to admit to myself i don't know i was thinking about getting into illustration <laughs> oh yeah what I feel like that's something i could do i don't really know how to start that or make get that ball rolling but i mean research basically but anytime i want to like get into something that's always my first step is just like look up as much as i can just g look google it look it up on youtube and see what professionals have been like here's how you get started here's what i did and all of that to at least have yeah. some kind of idea of what in what is entailed Yeah, that's true. I think that the other thing is that I know ways that I need to get started and I'm just so hesitant to do them. Um, but I guess it's just, I, it's, it's literally just a matter of doing them. Like. <laughs> yeah, that's always the, the most difficult part is actually doing the thing. That it's. The only times I find myself really succeeding at something in any realm is when it's something that you can um, do in little pieces. That's why I never really got into art as deeply as I wanted to. Because no matter how long I kept working at it, it would still take like four or five hours for me to fully finish a drawing to my like standards. And so that was just too much work. I couldn't do that every day. And, like, I didn't trust myself to be able to put it down and pick up the same drawing the next day and keep working on it. So, I just kind of gave up. Whereas, with piano that I've been practicing for the last five months, it's like, even if I'm feeling really crappy and I have no energy or patience for it, I can just play, like, a song. And that's mm -hmm. at least some progress. I, I think, I was thinking this recently in terms of both drawing and um drawing and piano which is that uh learning music is like a lot less stressful because you have songs that you can play you have other people's work that you can basically just mimic and that's considered socially acceptable to do whereas with drawing ah oh, you won by like a lot wow oh yes i did fail um, I'm surprised. Yeah, but then with drawing, it's like not only do you have to practice, but you have to like find a thing to practice with. So you have to either come up with an idea to draw or draw like still life or something. So like it's 
it's much more driven by you and your own creativity. Whereas with music, it, it can at least start with just like figuring out how it fits into what other people have made. And then later you can make your own music if that's what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really interesting point I hadn't considered because I find that the thing that I struggle with the most with my art is just deciding what I want to draw. So I find that I'm having a much easier time with it. And like, I've been doing things, I think I'm learning, or I've like, especially in the last like year or so, I've learned how to just pick at things like a little bit at a time. Because I do that too, where it's like, I need to finish it all at once, but I working really hard to just allow myself to work on it when I feel like I want to work on it. And so much of my drawing is like very repetitive, tedious bits because that's like something that I find very relaxing and then I think is also very visually pleasing. Um, and so uh, it, it actually has is like starting to become again something that I use to de-stress but also like if I look at what I create like I really think that I really think I could do illustrate, I could get into illustrations, or I was thinking it would be really fun to do like album cover art. Oh, um, yeah. Stuff like that really falls into the vein of like the, the, the things that I like to create. Um, but it's, a, it, it really, the thing is like, it, it's about putting myself out there. And I think that's where my biggest struggle is, lies, because I just. I feel like also with. Have a hard time with that. With drawing, especially. It's like there's there's such a pressure to do it in such a specific way and to like reach a very specific level and a specific look where so much of it is meant it, it's supposed to have like a professional look and be something you could eventually like sell. But it's like some of the coolest art, like if I've been looking at all of these different art pieces from like the 90s or like from the civil rights movement, like different murals and things, and I'm like, this, if it was posted on Twitter as just a drawing, would get laughed out of so many artistic communities for being amateur and like mm. looking like little kid shit. And it's like, it's amazing art though, despite mm. not having like this very polished look or like, you know, decent proportion, all this stuff. It's like, I, I feel like a lot of what we've done with society and what we've done with creativity, you know, like with music the way we treat it all as a competition now, like American Idol stuff yeah. or trying to get signed. It's like there should be room for people who are just wanting to express themselves and make stuff that it doesn't necessarily follow the conventions or doesn't necessarily have like a perfect polished look. Like Janis Joplin or Bob Dylan are by most standards not good singers, but it doesn't matter because the music they made and the lyrics they wrote were so artistically driven i've been on this for a really long time actually because it's something that i find really frustrating and i had to work through a lot of because i can do realism to some extent but it's incredibly boring for me and it's not there's nothing like there's no expression there and i think that like the act of creation is such an important form of like human self-expression that we don't allow ourselves to do because we can modify it and then like assign this like morality almost to the person to the person based on this level of ta of like kind of arbitrary talent um without any regards to the fact that like all of these things are just like skills that can be obtained and they're it, the enjoyment of it or the audience of it is totally subjective like they're they decide they like but having these like standards of like you have to meet like x y and z before anybody will look at it or like enjoy what you are creating is so ridiculous because it also drives people from actually wanting to say i mean then we're like getting into like cringe culture because it drives people from saying um i like enjoy this thing or that like that thing like getting any kind of views and i'm so much more interested in interaction between like artist and consumer than I am in anything else um but that's like lost in this like world that we live in of like competition yeah um, I I, I find cover, it like, everything. with a lot of movies that I've been watching lately I've been going back and I've been watching more like independent films or just like 
older films by directors who are now considered like um you know are considered like very skilled and very experienced but like watching a lot of directors like early films it's so apparent how like scrappy and like uh, creative a lot of them had to be they had very little budget they didn't have like mm-hmm. all that much to work with they didn't have very much time or like materials but they just like made all of these creative decisions that made for movies that like by a lot of standards are kind of sloppy kind of amateur but doesn't like are still really good in their own way and i i I don't know i just feel like yeah definitely it's this this idea of of cringe culture being terrified of criticism of being terrified of with art you know not showing something that's super realistic or like because the only things that end up really doing well are things that are like have hyper realism or just like some form of realism or that are basically more focused on the character design than they are necessarily the actual art to it like i see so many artists who they just create characters without ever doing something with those characters like they'll they'll create the character concepts and that's mm-hmm. cool that means you're that can be like character design is a really cool skill and it's very fun to um to to see what people do but like i i just if, treating that as the only thing to really obtain in art is frustrating because there's so many other things you can do with art that don't don't even have those same that same value set yeah absolutely and i think like there's like a lack of like um i don't know this project that i was kind of working on that i'm still working on but it was really the moment where i was like why don't i just try to get into illustration because i'm looking at the things that i'm making and i'm like this is i'm just like i have a hard time putting the story and the like pictures together even though they like both exist but in a way that's like cohesive to people but the the idea of the project was so much more about um forcing people to analyze being from their own subjective experience and making them aware that my intention as the creator um it really means nothing in the like in the finished product it, and to, and for what it means to them like it doesn't take away the meaning that i don't offer explanation um in fact it's like more meaningful because the the consumer has to decide for themselves what it means yeah if that makes sense yeah 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 sick yeah. of this like this like everyone wants an explanation everyone wants to know like oh what did the the creator what did the artist mean and it's like that's not the point <laughs> that's oh not why God. people create it's, it's really it is, but, like it's really disheartening how like subtext has just been destroyed like they the people don't believe in subtext they think anyone who sees subtext is just overthinking things and it's like this just mm-hmm. bizarre anti-intellectualism <laughs> where they're just like everything is the literal superficial thing that you are seeing and viewing and that's it and all they focus on is like the lore of the situation what what does this mean for the universe of the film and it's like no it's like telling so much about the the specific emotional journey of these characters and things and if you would just take two seconds to think about it you would understand that but it's you don't want to do that because that involves like effort on your part it's not just consuming it's like actually um like putting some work into what you you are viewing mm-hmm. uh okay uh being real quick critical do you, and curious do you remember how to play this game vaguely uh i was looking over the rules but then i was too in in our conversation um okay. will you just give me like a quick rundown yeah basically um you just need to get marbles to fill out the potions you've got so like your sands of time on the right you need two yellow and two black and uh so you pick a marble from the chute and then all the ones above it fall down and if two after you've done that two marbles of the same color hit each other you also get that those two marbles so you can kind of combo it and it's 
once you've okay. filled the potion, you can actually use it, whatever its ability was. And I believe you get points by the end of the game um, based on how many potions you actually finished. And we go until the shoot's empty, and I think it's four rounds? Question mark? I'm not certain, but basically, that's basically it. You just build up the potions. Cool. Okay, so uh, you were saying? Uh, uh, so essentially, like, the point I, what I have been working on are store, like, essentially images based on stories that I've written, but with no explanation as to what the stories are. Um, that I, And it's really, like, mostly surrealism, so it's a lot of sim symbolism, but it, like, forces the viewer to come up with their own explanation for what it is, um, which, like, it, I know is not going to, like, have a large audience in current times, but it's so much more important to me to, like, explore this idea or, or like, conversation than it is for me to make something that looks pretty yeah exactly i i feel like that's the big thing is there are not really enough works being made now that are left up to interpretation like it's far too often um every work feels that it needs to explain itself in every, if not in every facet, like in at least all of the like pl Good. plot facets. But it's like, to me, some of the most like, um, the the movies that stand the test of time, or like the works that stand the test of times, are the ones with ambiguity. Like people still talk about Blade Runner. They still talk about like, uh, Inception, which had ambiguous endings mm -hmm. because it, um what was it uh folding ideas dan olson he he was like if it, it is a method that forces you to engage with the work on a deeper level it makes you think mm -hmm. harder about it and like in some ways that could be considered kind of a, a cheap tactic but at the same time it's like if it works i'm okay with that because i i appreciate anything that makes me think more about a film or about a book or about a, a painting or a song or anything rather than just having mm -hmm. it all laid out before me it's like yeah that can be fun and entertaining but it's like I'd like to think I, I'd like to, to have more that I can get from it that I can like continue to get from it even later mm -hmm. um, or it's like it, there'll be people who completely ignore the, the social subtext of stuff there are people now criticizing the new uh candy man remake for having po political subtext I th um excuse me did they watch the first movie that's what everybody like with a brain is saying is like that's the series it's always been very heavily political uh, that's part of the appeal how did you even enjoy it? that's the thing is they don't actually like the original movie they're just saying it because they want to have a dog whistle to like um pretend that they care about so that they can actually just rant about politics in a way that uh absolves them from actually taking a side right but you know it's just it's it's very frustrating how many people act in bad faith when it comes to media trying to and just how God damn, oh, it's just so frustrating. And a lot of it feels like it just comes back to um, people wanting to be right and just, like, not digesting what other people are saying. Like, everyone is, like, very attached to their their take on reality, um, which makes sense. I mean, that's, like, how we experience the world, but, like you lose so much in allowing this like uh, recognition one of your own subjective reality as not an objective reality but also like in overlooking the fact that other people have their own like or come from their own unique experiences and are never going to understand you on the level that like you believe they do yeah and honestly at a certain point you kind of shouldn't want them to 
I, I feel like mm-hmm. this this constant striving for some kind of ideal of acceptance and understanding it, and is like it, it kind of betrays the incredibly nuanced, multifaceted like social interaction of just being human. Like you should mm-hmm. not agree completely on everything. You should not think of things in all the oh, no. same way. The fact that we are all unique and have different perspective on things is what makes like being a person so interesting and experiencing things so interesting and getting to hear what other people like think of things. Everybody is so focused on like trying to get the hot take on stuff or like trying to have the the right opinion that it's like I I feel like I so much more want to hear all of the opinions even the shitty ones absolutely because in a way the the shitty ones are still fascinating from like why they came to that conclusion even if they are i mean like wrong or acting in bad faith Mm -hmm. it's like well why what's the deeper meaning to that and why is that how they interpreted Mm -hmm. this work that's that's also in its own way so interesting yeah, absolutely. I want to be challenged. Like, that's another thing. Like, I want to be challenged. And this is something that I talk about a lot. Like, it doesn't feel great, obviously, to be challenged, but that's, like, kind of the point. Like, it's not supposed to feel good, but those emotions, it, it kind of teaches you more about how to, like, really digest your emotions, um, allowing for challenge and allowing, allowing for correction and, like, allowing to, like, yourself to kind of explore all of these different you know facets to something than just getting stuck in like this one belief system and this one this is the only right way to be um which just like to some extent uh that people can like exist like that (laughs) um Uh, I, like, often say that, like, for all of my, like, ideals, like, of course I just, I want people to, like, be able to live, like, freely, genuinely, um, I, I want, I, like, dream of liberation, but, like, within that, it's not like I want some, like, kind of strange, like, Uh, utopia in which um like everyone thinks the same way and like has the same opinions and cares about the same things uh the world would be so uninteresting like it'd be so boring i think my larger thing is that so much of what we argue about as people and what is debated ends up being stuff that should be very obvious especially when it comes to things like social issues like it's it's very frustrating that we're still arguing about things that should really just come down to basic human empathy like it it should mm-hmm. be clear to most people but there's so many people so so trapped in this like selfish thinking that anything that like anything that could help someone else, but that they would not like, not even something that would hurt them, just something that they wouldn't like that would actively help other people. They have to find some Mm. reason logically. That's always the big thing now is like, logically you have to find a reason why you don't like this. And it's like, no, you emotionally just don't like it. You find displeasure with it. And rather than unpacking that and maybe improving yourself as a person, they choose instead to try and just, cobble together a terrible argument in bad faith about why actually it's the intellectually superior thing to think this garbage. Right. They definitely double down. And the other thing is this idea of like intellectual supremacy in which like, it doesn't really matter to me how intelligent someone is like means very little because yeah people just like weaponize that knowledge or they weaponize this idea of being smart or intelligent when the reality is like intelligence is much more than just like being 
like the way that you think about things. It's the way that you manage your emotions. It's the way that you manage everything in your life. Um, it's not simply like I know things and I can make connections um, and and hold that over you. Uh, I think, I, I don't know. I find intelligence is intelligence and laziness are two things that are thrown around so much but both are kind of propagandistic terms where intelligence is is just meant as a way to put down people for being unintelligent when in reality it's it's more about like curiosity you know someone who is not inherently like knows that much or even has the capacity to but wants to know more i think is like overall a smarter quote unquote person than someone who has read a million books knows so many things has the capacity to like learn all these new systems but they're so close-minded that they never want to learn anything new they're just going to keep focusing on all the things that they've already decided are important in their own mind or like with laziness right. people as stating that it's like you know the amount of work you put into something determines how much you're going to get out of it, which is, if you take even a minute to think about it, has never been how things worked in the adult world. But people want to believe that because if they don't, it implies that their work is actually going to nothing, or at least nothing that will benefit them personally, which unfortunately is the case for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it's just, again, it's like this propagandistic term to make people who work jobs like yours where it's you're doing food service and you're getting, like, not a very high wage, I presume. You know, maybe that's rude. I apologize. But, like, implying that... No, it's that, okay. I mean, I'm paid better than a lot of people, which is sad. Yeah, that's, that's the statement I'll make. <laughs> that's the thing is that you're probably still not paid enough for how much work you do, and it's still considered, you know, an easy job... Or you'd be considered lazy for, like, stressing out over it. But it's like, that is really hard. Food service is incredibly mm -hmm. labor-intensive work that is considered, like, low-tier and, like, undeserving of more money. Yet, the high-tier jobs, where it's just a lot of, like, basic mental decision-making, are, are considered worth thousands and thousands of times more, which is so ridiculous to me. In my estimation, all of these, like, corporate jobs, especially executive jobs, should pay so much less for, like, they're doing so little work. Period. Not that much work. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's, it is, it's really frustrating, especially, like, now, as we were talking about earlier, to kind of connect it back to that, it's, like, I feel like I am destroying my body, and I am one of the lucky few who has health insurance that can kind of help me with that, but the, the long-term of, terms effects of this, like, I'm going to be dealing with for the rest of my life, and that's just the expectation, like, you are just expected to push yourself too hard and to destroy yourself for jobs that are never going to give back what you give them. Um, yeah, that's always the thing, is that they expect so much work from you, but the, it doesn't matter how much work you put in, because they are still going to pay you the same amount. They try and imply that it will somehow mm -hmm. get, get you more value for you, when in reality, all you're doing is giving more value to your employers, who will just keep that value, and hang over your head the idea mm -hmm. of maybe upward, like mobility but like that's hardly in most food service jobs even like an incentive like the highest you can get to is like what manager and managers do not make that much more and it's still the same if not more work so like it's yeah it's it's ridiculous no it's absolutely true and i mean i was in a position because i was a production lead and I had to step down because of my health issues and because it was too much stress. I couldn't handle it. It was not worth it for me. I did that role and I like honestly um well I'm actually I don't want to like get too much into my personal stuff. But um 
they, uh, so I had to step down and then, you know, I'm now making less money, but most of the labor that I'm still doing is, all of the labor that I'm doing is the same. Um, minus like, I don't get to do now, like the things that I enjoy doing the most, which was like, planning and ordering and things like that, because those are things that I find to be very relaxing. Um, but, uh, um, but often that's like not even an option for people. Um, oh, I didn't want to do that one. Uh, often that's like not even an option for people to be able to step down and like take the space they need. Yeah, it's, I mean, all of it, like, it's, I, I, it all roots back to capitalism and the ridiculous propaganda we've built around it that it's like, uh, you have the opportunity to go as high as you want, but it's like, in reality, the people who go that high and the people who still champion capitalism are people who have had to actively, actively uh, manipulate like all all of these mm -hmm. entrepreneurs who, now who are like, oh, I make all of this passive income. They're doing like such scummy crap, like drop shipping, which is illegal, but it's in a way that doesn't, you know, you can't get caught up with. Basically, like you can drop it in an instant. Uh, supplements, which are super super sketchy. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh. What else? Uh. MLMs which are pure manipulation. All, all of that crap. It's just like, oh, yeah. it's, it's just so frustrating because they try and imply like, oh, I worked harder. It's like, no, you didn't. You had the capital to start up like a supplement business. Like if I also had a uh, hundred thousand dollars to set up a supplement business, I could be in your position in exactly the amount of, same amount of time. With very little work, it's not hard to do those things. It just costs money. So you have to already have the money to start up these businesses that get you more money. And, like, it's all super sketchy, uh, quasi-legal stuff that, like... Or, or, or like, uh, all these YouTube channels, like, 5-Minute Crafts or whatever, that, like, just churn out garbage... Like all the time and just reuse content. Yeah. It's like that stuff is not hard to make. I could make, like, I did so many voiceovers starting out when I started doing it professionally for like YouTube channels that would just do the most like pointless trash. There was like this one channel that was like, it was like draw their life. And it was just basically he would pick a, he would pick a popular YouTuber. And he would just g basically look up their Wikipedia or whatever, and he would just, like, make a script based on that. And, like, it would always emphasize, like, this is how many cars they bought when they were famous, and this is when they moved to L.A. Just the most pointless, useless crap that nobody should care about. And they were making so much money because it was just gaming SEO. They knew that people would care about that, and it took no effort. Or, like, top ten lists. And it's like, I could easily oh, yeah. make top 10 lists. It's just stock footage and a voiceover. I could I could make a channel in a week and fill it with like a dozen top 10 lists and be able to make like a ton of ad revenue off of that. But I don't want to because it would be so soul draining to make just that garbage vapid content for just the sake of money. And it's not like that much work. That would be like one full work week to just start that up and then making e a new one every week or so like it, w it wouldn't be anything it's so so frustrating absolutely i know i think about that all the time like for a while i was kind of on the train of like maybe i should just sell out and like maybe i should just do all of these things that like are pretty simple but like meaningless but the thing is that like 90% of what's being produced 
in any like range is worthless. Like, I don't know. It's like Amazon's a good example of this. Like, it, the products that they're selling are not good or well made products that are meant to last. Like, nothing is meant to last. Um, and that's like moving even outside of the like creative spirit of of like YouTube or whatever videos like. But it's the same thing. Like people are just making products to make products um, to sell them, and it's not. Uh, it's like rendering. Like it just feels like so much is like meaningless now to. Uh, in f meaningless, like in favor of just making money, which then render like even like renders that like wealth meaningless, which it already it is just. But like even to like a greater extent. Oh, absolutely. The the, uh, the thing that really frustrates me is like all of the most wealthy people right now are people who j just like t took credit for ideas that are not even that creative. Like look at Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Bill Gates. All they hmm. did was like Elon Musk. He was just like, what if we had a bank online? Jeff Bezos, what if we had a store online? Bill Gates, what if we had a different computer? And then he, they had other people do all of the actual work of making those things, but because they put this idea together, now they just have wealth that they'll never even use. Like, literally, they could not spend all of the money they have if they wanted to. There's no reason for them to keep it. Genuinely, like, depending on where you're at, like, more than more a million a year is the absolute max you would really need to live in pure luxury and still be able to actually spend any amount of money with so much left over for savings and a lot of places like a hundred thousand to three hundred thousand dollars will make you live perfectly comfortably forever you'll be fine you don't need more than that hmm and it's 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 just so yeah, so frustrating that the pe it's especially the people who get this money it, it's just it's this like horrible like logic puzzle of like the people who get, would do that to get the money are the kind of people who are not going to use the money for anything good and the people who would use the money for good are not the kind of people who would be willing to get it in the first place because of how much you have to exploit people yep Ah, it's endlessly disturbing. It's honestly what you know our country is built on. What so much of the world is built on. Yep, 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 yep. Like it yep. really just goes back to colonialism. We've been doing all of this literally since you know we settled down, or since we figured out agriculture and settled down. And not everything, I mean, that's a very, like, only speaking for, that's not speaking for, like, all, all cultures, certainly, um, and places in the world, but, that which affects us, uh, certainly has been occurring for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I watch way too much content about all of that, so it's always at the top of my mind. Oh, mine too. I just feel like I have this conversation so much, and, like, to some extent, it's just, like, it is an important conversation to have, but it, you know. It's depressing. It's very depressing. Kind of just feels like, yeah, it's just... Yeah, it's distressing also, and, like, sometimes just feels like spinning wheels, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's always the big thing is, like, like we all get it, but, like, what can we do about it? And the answer is just, like, not much. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's also, like, there's, like, an aspect to all of the leftist content that I watch where it's, like, you're... Well, it's like, yeah, I'm glad that there's someone out there 
explaining why so much of this is nonsense, so much of what specific, like, pundits or, uh, like, rich celebrities do is, like, really terrible. It's, or, like, just, like, illogical or, like, how they're specifically manipulating you with the, how they say things. It's also, like, that's just giving them more credence that the, what they're saying is in some way important. And it's, I don't know, I don't know. At, at a certain point, it was, like, there were so many people making, like, um... The thing that really stuck out to me is there was that friggin' idiot, Caitlin Bennett, the, like, Kent State gun girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I know all about Caitlin Bennett. Yeah, and how she, she does her stupid, like, walk-around interview segments. And just all of the leftist content was people reacting to her videos or breaking down, like, why she was, like, what she was doing was stupid and bad content. And it's, like, at a certain point, I was, like, I just don't want to hear her anymore. Like, I get it. We all get it. Mm -hmm. She's stupid. She gets it. I think that's the big thing that really broke through for me and I had an epiphany. I'm, like, she gets it. She knows that what she's saying doesn't matter. All she's interested in is making people upset. She knows that what she's saying is wrong, it, like both that it's incorrect and just morally reprehensible, but she does not care. And all we're doing is giving her the attention that she wants. And that's... Yep. And that's the, the most frustrating part because it's so hard not to, because just ignoring her, like if we just ignored people like that, they'd eventually like get buried under actual like smart people. But like... Mm -hmm. it's so hard because like there's always going to be like a handful of people who are like she actually has a point and it's like she doesn't though right but I think if we stopped paying her any mind like in the mainstream like people are always going to have attention that they don't deserve but like I, I was I think about this a lot with like Trisha Paytas um, because her whole thing, like, all she wants is the attention, good or bad. Like, she's a sensationalist. And it's the more attention that we give her and the more that people, you know, have to say about her, good or bad, doesn't matter. She's profiting off of it. And if we just ignored her and, like, it's kind of too late now because the, the culture around her is honestly terrifying and kind of fascinating um like she would go away like all she wants is to be in the public eye she makes her profit off of being in the public eye off of being a spectacle if we didn't make her a spectacle she wouldn't be profiting off of it she would wouldn't be like spreading these like terrible ideas and she would go away yeah exactly like that's that's always been trish's thing is no matter what is being said it's I I the second I saw anything from Trisha I was like at first I was like is is this person really this stupid and then it became clear it's like no they just recognize that, that it's that effect of if you say something dumb enough and or inflammatory enough it will get you attention mm -hmm. even if you know mm -hmm. that you're incorrect it's like it doesn't matter because the larger point was just to get people to talk about you. Cares very little about what she's actually, or like, yeah, they care very little about what they're actually saying. It's just about having that attention. And like, this can be seen as early as like, early, early in their career, but pre YouTube, because they were constantly, um, because they, their like entire career was built off of just being on like, TLC uh, reality TV shows and like interview shows, like the like yeah. caddy interview shows. I mean, that's that was it, basically it the to be plan. A reality TV star. That, it's so blatant. That was the plan for Trisha. Trisha just went out to LA and was just like, I have to get myself on camera in any way that I can. I got to get people talking about me, if, whether it's good or bad. I don't care. Mm hmm. It's also why, like, after, um, <coughs> uh, 
uh, Trump left the office, my entire attitude about him was that I just was not going to pay him any more mind because that's all that he wants is mm -hmm. that attention. The get go. It's like if we didn't give him this attention, he would have gone away. Like, how do people not understand that? It's like it's not funny. Like these people, this isn't funny. It's not like cute. It's not like something for us to gawk at. It's like if we stopped paying attention to these people that ir like that ag like that infuriate us, it will go away. <laughs> well, that was the thing with Trump is that when he was just a weird, gross businessman who like hosted a reality show, it was funny. It was like, look at this bumbling idiot who can't really hurt anybody. I mean, he's probably hurting like employees and like a lot of other people, but it's like, whatever, he's like a cartoon character. It wasn't until he started running for office and took on such radical right-wing ideals that it started to become a problem. They like actually became dangerous, but everybody still saw him as that cartoon character. And he, he is cartoonish, but like he's like a cartoon villain. But I feel like the tide is turning on that at least a little bit. Um, thankfully, there's not been a ton of news about him since he left office. But uh, apparently recently at one of his rallies, uh, he encouraged people to get the vaccine and they, they booed him. So it's gone to the point where all of the ideals he imbued in them are more important to them than the guy. Which uh. is... That's the the thing. I uh, th that was a big thing I've been thinking about lately. Is um, what actually do I need? I need yellow and red. Um, the like I've been thinking about lately is that the uh, uh, the right wing versus the left wing idea is if there's a figure that you respect, a a person that you respect. The, the general, like, left-wing idea is, like, if they say something that you don't agree with, you don't lose respect for them necessarily. Like, you just maybe change your, your viewpoint on it where you see it and you're like, okay, this person that I respect is saying something that's not fully reprehensible, but something that I had not considered a different angle on something. Maybe I should look into that. Whereas a lot of times when it comes to the right wing, they will see um, they will see someone that they respect saying something they don't agree with, which often is like trans rights nowadays, any hot button issue like that. And instead they're like, okay, I'm dropping them. I never, I never liked them at all. And like just disavowing them entirely, which is what they're doing with Trump now, but like... Yeah, it's it's really it's really bizarre to me that they don't think like, hey, maybe it's a chance to self-reflect. Maybe I should get the vaccine now that this person I respect says that it's a good idea. But no, instead, they're like they're die hard to their values, never change. Which I mean, I guess that is, um, I guess that is what conservative really means: conserve your values. Your principles, right. quote unquote. Um. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the thing is, like, it's just in over attachment to their emotions um, around the thing. It's, they just don't want to be wrong. I mean, that's also like a human thing. I, I, I don't know. I, I think, like, it's definitely a, a, an emotional thing, and it's very odd to me how deeply emotional they are because they're, you know, humans, deeply emotional creatures, and how mm. how heavily they try and deny that at every every step. Yeah, it's it's the denial of it. It's saying that what they're doing is logical when the reality is that... It's all emotion based. Um, and really, like, you, there needs to be a middle ground. Like, you should be operating from a middle ground of the two and not from, you know, one side or the other. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's also um, uh, the big thing I notice is with people who consider themselves centrist, which is really just right wing but not as deeply right wing because when most of the conversation has been pushed so far right 
the center is still to the right of center. Um, right. But, uh, like so often they go off of this common, this like appeal to common sense where they just basically just say like, that's not, that's not how things have been. That's not how things work. So like, clearly that's not how things are just completely ignoring their privilege every time where they, they completely ignore the fact that like, that's how it's been for them. That's how their world has been. <laughs> but for so many people who didn't get, a say in how things worked who were disenfranchised they don't get that they don't get that at all so that's why when people are like uh, concerned with language policing or new terms and things it's like no they're not new terms they're older terms that you were just hearing about because now the people who use them ha actually have like a voice and a say in things and like now that they're coming like actually getting franchised or enfranchised disenfranchised enfranchised whatever the opposite of disenfranchised is i guess but people are having to actually learn things and a lot of people are frustrated with that because a lot of people are so adverse again so incurious and adverse to learning that they just want this like super easy common sense world view this like life that they thought they had where they could just be whatever and not have to worry about you know being nice to other people on on more than an overt level of just general politeness mm -hmm. or like false nicety yeah like where it's like they're polite when it's like you know pleases and thanks you but as soon as they have to actually show empathy to another person and treat them with respect well, then they, they'll question it. Like, why do I have to? It's like, I don't know, because you're a fucking person. Just be one for a bit. Why do you have to question, you know, people's pronouns? It's like, hey, like, I, the, the thing I always say is like, hey, cisgendered person, if I called you by the wrong pronouns, would you be annoyed? Yes. Good. Don't do it. Like, pretty simple. Golden rule. Like, don't do something mm -hmm. that would piss you off because it's probably going to piss off the person you're talking to right um, absolutely but they I mean at the end of the day like they're they don't care like if they cared at all, at all they would you know be vaccinated and... yeah exactly A lot of, I, I'm back on Facebook right now, um, which has been a real whirlwind uh, to, and I'm not, I guess I'm not surprised, but so many of the people that I went to high school with or I knew from back then are maybe not super blatantly anti-vax, but they definitely have, I see a lot of the, um, uh, of people uh, complaining about the fact that it's going to be you know, required for their kids to be vaccinated to be in school. Like, oh, I saw saw a post that was like, you can go to a restaurant and take your mask off, but kids can't take ma their masks off at the desk at their desks. What a joke! And it's like, vaccines are already required for students in Washington State because of a measles act outbreak. Also, like, it's not. I, f I, I have umbrage with the whole take off your mask to eat at the restaurant. That's fucking stupid. Period. I hate those policies because they make no fucking sense. Because you're eating, oh, no. suddenly you're sick. No. You are, as soon as you take your mask off, guess what? You are a risk. It doesn't matter why you're doing mm -hmm. it. Get your food to go, douchebag. That's it. Pretty yeah. simple. Like, what? what is this? Like, oh, I want to eat at the table and infect it and like everything within six feet of no it doesn't just become safe because you're eating i hate that so much absolutely it's very frustrating um and i mean i've watched it for so long like i've i've just been watching it because i live in belltown so you know uh and 
weird. It's a weird position to be in, like, even for me, because I don't want to, you know, because part of me wants to participate in that, but, but also it's like, I'm vaccinated and there, you know, I'm in, but it's like, there's still breakthrough cases. There are still people getting sick. And at what point, like, do we care enough to like, actually watch this thing end like i am of the opinion that we should just go back into lockdown yeah no i am of the opinion that we shouldn't have left lockdown we keep doing this weird like dip your toes like this weird dip your toe back into like being unlocked down and it's like no we should should have just done a hard lockdown and just gotten it over with if we had done that there wouldn't be a delta variant We would have taken a hit to the economy, but we did anyways, and we continue to. And we're gonna take an even bigger hit because people are dead. There's less people to buy stuff. That also affects the economy. Mm -hmm. It's just so, so stupid. Yeah. Yeah, if people hadn't been forced to go to work as essential workers who are to go work as, um, you know, food service and blah, blah, blah. It's like, if we had left the grocery stores, the pharmacies, the actual essential businesses open, had rules around it, didn't actually have any allowance for people refusing to wear masks. Yeah. Changed. I mean, it's so much worse down here. We wouldn't be dealing with this. It's, it's... I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. It's so much worse down here, but, like... It's like, God, it's just so frustrating that we can't just crack down on it. Because if someone's not wearing a mask, it's very likely that they are going to be violently aggressive about not wanting to wear one. So I do not expect any kind of like like grocery store worker or someone who's being paid very little to deal with that, deal with a violent situation, basically. But then it's also like, I don't, what are we supposed to do then? Post up security at every door? Make sh- like, have bouncers basically at any public location? No, it's like, I don't even know what that would look, or what, like, you know, it's a good idea. It's like, a, it's the ideal, but it's like, yeah, what would that even look like? Because I'm also like, I don't think that, like, the police should be, like, regulating stuff like that, and it would just become this like very violent oh yeah well i didn't even consider what police like... in my scenario i was thinking like private security but that's there's no business that's going to take on that cost if the government doesn't like require it absolutely going to fall to that and that's you know genuinely terrifying I don't think that they should be involved. No, definitely not. It's just that I think that, you know, people should be held accountable. And I don't even know how, yeah, I have no idea what that would look like. Somebody else would have to, like, figure that out. But I know. It's just it's, like, it's so, so complicated. complicated but at the, the same person. it seems so simple. But then the logistics to actually make it happen are so annoyingly complicated. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's just frustrating to be the person that spent, you know, two years by myself. Hold up in my basement, watching everybody go back into the world. And, like, now being, like, dealing with all of these, like, very intense anxieties because I am not ready to go back into the world. Part of me is. Part of me needs that, and I need to, like, be around other people. But it's, like, even the last couple of weeks in which I have, like, been meeting new people and stuff, it's it's terrifying. It's really scary, and I don't know, like, I don't feel like it's something that I'm going to, like, be able to, like, keep up with. Um, Yeah. Because, you know, I have, there. I don't have, a guarantee of accountability from them that they're not putting themselves in situations that could you know every person affects the next person 
Yeah, exactly. That's the thing is we need to be able to trust each other, but it's like it's real difficult mm-hmm. because the the consequences are so dire, and some people do not recognize that. Also, and I shouldn't feel like the quote unquote like crazy one because I'm not or because. I'm, like, still very hesitant to go and, like, be around people. I know. It's very frustrating because the public opinion of what is considered socially acceptable and what's considered too high maintenance is based on people who are not actually doing the research and keeping up with it. People who don't recognize that, like, no, we're in another surge. Things are getting bad again. Like, they don't bother reading the news and stuff, and but then they're allowed to socially decide, like, what's cool and what isn't. And it's... It's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Also, I just realized uh, what the game end condition is. Um, There are these four countdown cards, which if you look on your score, you have one, I have two. And when all four of them are taken, that's when the game ends. You get one when you make three of the same potion or five uh, unique potions. Oh, okay. So right now... Good to know. Like, you have one set fully of five of them. You have, like, two of the Lava Mansing, two of the Prismatic Joy. So if you get one more of any of them that you already have two of, and it includes the ones you've already used as well, um, you will get that. It gets you four victory points, and it will end the game. Okay, good to know. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Am I able to get there? If I can fill out this brain one, Potion of Wisdom, I think I can do it. Can I do that? But people are going to do what they're going to do, and I can't police them any more than anybody else. I can just try to, you know, do my best, which, like, I have made, like, poor decisions in the favor of, in favor of the, like, social majority. And that sucks. Like, I am not stewing in the guilt of it because that's not productive, but, like, it doesn't feel great. (laughs) But, of course, like, to me, even poor decisions is, like, the fact that, you know, my job was open two months into quarantine. (sighs) Yeah. I mean, it's... Ah, it's a very stressful time. I I don't know. I, I I I could rant for so long about all of these things, but it's also like maybe maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should think of something else for a bit. It just gets exhausting because again, it's the same thing where it's like we can like wonder and stew and like rant for hours over the same things and we can get to the like bot we could we could we could logic our way to the bottom of like why people are the way they are etc cetera, etc cetera. but like at the end of the day it's not changing anything so the f- frustrations and the feelings still exist i think there's like to whatever extent it is like productive and important to vent but like it only goes so far if like you have no actual power in change yeah, yeah. Um, um, that actually... I, I... Oh, go ahead. That actually reminds me of a movie we watched recently. Um, Coco oh. found it because it was recommended on TikTok. It's uh, Jack Brooks' Monster Slayer. It's from, like, 2007. Interesting. It's... Uh, it, it, I mean, it's like a it's a monster movie, and it's got like some really cool practical effects, um, which is great. It's like it seems like it's low budget. It looks kind of like a TV movie, um, but like the whole concept is around this guy whose like entire family was killed by a monster in the woods, and uh, the trauma has given him just anger issues, and he ba- it's basically the story of him learning to, um, use that to fight monsters like that's how he basically like therapy has never worked for him so like Mm -hmm. that is that is his uh his method of therapy and the the monsters are really cool and really well designed um 
Robert England. Freddy Krueger himself is a big part of it. Oh. It's on Tubi, T-U-B-I dot TV for free with ads. Oh, I use Tubi all the time. Yeah. Cool. I, I wish there was a way to like, I don't know, to pay some amount to not do the ads, but I appreciate that there's always that option of like just free content as long as you don't mind watching watching commercials. Um, oh, yeah, and we finished Fear Street. You and I didn't really talk about that much through text, but, like, I'd, I'd definitely like to talk more about that series. Um, oh, yeah. I uh, didn't watch the last one, but I don't remember it super well. Mm. As far as the story goes... I guess I was, like, a little... I mean, and this is, like, getting into spoilers. Mm. I guess I was just, like, a little... Con I mean, okay, it logically it did make sense, but, like, there were just some things about the um, villain, or, like, the, you know, villain that um, seemed a little weird. Like, why was he the one to leave the note with the, uh, uh, like, woman who had survived in the second movie uh if he, if he just tried, tried like trying to throw them off the trail maybe i like wasn't paying enough attention I, I think at that point um he was young enough that i don't think he had taken on that mantle yet no it was after because it was at the uh, uh it was when she was like grown and then you see the note go through the like letterbox and oh. it's from him and it says so, I don't know. It's just, like, a continuity thing that, like, kind of bothered me because I was like, that, I don't understand why he took on that action. And, again, maybe it was just, to like, throw off the, the scent. Um, I mean, part of it could be it that. Part of it could be just, like, it, it seemed like part of his character to kind of rub it in people's faces. Like, if you go back and and watch some of the true. earlier ones, a lot of his actions, it becomes clear, like, he was... Uh, he was like manipulating and like pulling the strings the whole time while mm -hmm. while putting on this facade of seeming nice. Um, oh, that's true. I I I think the larger thing is that the the whole series is kind of blunt, where it has like a an interesting overarching theme of how um of how like p people who already have privilege. Uh basically get that because they steal it from people who are in poverty and lack that privilege um mm. and how even if you wanted to do anything about it there's like there there's so little to self-actualize going back kind of to like stuff we were talking about already um just because of like the the oppressive force of um of like poverty and oppression that mm. that prevents you from doing more with with yourself and like uh I, I I I like that and I think they did it decently enough for like a teen audience but watching it as an adult I f it feels kind of lacking it feels like it could have used I don't know like stronger characterizations overall and just like uh, the it, it's it seems a little messy in a lot of places. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it certainly wasn't like perfect, uh, but it was enjoyable. Especially the end of that first movie was so good. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that was the larger I, thing. Is like the first movie really started to pick up, and then the second one really just like knocked it back down. Whereas, like, they started to build a lot of themes in that second movie. You, you just bring a whole new set of characters that I got to try and like when I already didn't really like the first set of characters very much. 
And like the one character I did like in the second movie, who is there in the more present day, is like a totally different, she's characterized completely differently as an adult. Which I understand, like trauma, but it's like, that's a little frustrating when she was the only character out of the whole series I was like really enjoying. Right. I mean, yeah, but I think that, like, her characterization as an adult still, like, did make sense. Um, but I see what your point is, that I get that. But, yeah, my point is, in this, is, like, it makes sense. I don't find it disappointing because it does that, like, I, I totally get what they're going for. It's just, like, I find it way less enjoyable as a characterization than what, um, how she was characterized as a kid. Right. I did like that switch, though. Again, this is just getting into the story, but I did like the switch um, the sis of the sisters, where the expectation is, like, that was done, like, pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I um, think that was a pretty decent twist, and I appreciate but that... At, at, like, one point during the... Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I appreciate that they were able to include twists throughout the story, but still built to, like, a really satisfying twist ultimately in the final movie mm, yeah and none of the twists felt like reaching or like overdone or they they felt like very logical for um story that they were telling um which was nice to see uh yeah that last movie actually now that i'm thinking about it it was so sad like there was a part part of it was like just kind of very hard to watch um yeah that's that's the larger thing is it's like it, it's a really good story but it's a real downer mm -hmm. i mean at the same time i find... I, I was kind of expecting that though given like what it was supposed to be telling the story of at that point like i wasn't expecting there to be a, a happier time in that that last film but like it's it it was still kind of tough to sit through. Mm-hmm. Sure. Is that is that it? Got the third one. Oh, still going. Okay. Uh, I'm imagery. guessing you still get one more turn before it's over. Question mark. Because all of the. I thought you said we had to get four of them. Yeah, there aren't any more here. So I think I, it might be one of those cases where you get to, like, have one last turn to make sure it's all fair. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Some games do that. Others. Uh, I, there was, like, this great panel. I think I told you about this, but there was this great panel where they analyze specifically, like, where a board game will end and, like, how to kind of determine when you should end your board game. Because some will end, like, the second somebody plays the last card, it's over. Sometimes uh, they get to finish their turn after that. Sometimes everybody gets one more turn after that, including the person who played it. Sometimes everybody except them gets it. And so, like, there's a lot of different, like, interesting balance reasons for doing it in the different ways. And it's, mm -hmm. it's really fascinating. It gets kind of, like, technical, where they start talking about, like, studies and graphs and such. But, um... It's it's a really entertaining talk. Interesting. Uh... Is that it? Or mm, no, it's still your turn. Guess you gotta pick more potions? Or do we get to finish out our potions? Is that it? I'm not sure. Mm. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna be right back. I've needed to use the bathroom for quite a while.
Okay, I am back. Sorry, I usually take a break every hour or so when I'm streaming, but uh, when I'm streaming with someone, it's a little more fiddly. Yeah, understandable. Is that it? That's it. Okay, so you do get to finish your, your turn. Oh, and you got an additional one of the things. Yeah, I like just tried to use all of the potions that I could to see how many points I could get, but that's didn't that's quite a smart there. idea. Yeah, this game it's a little closed off in this method. The the thing with it is like it's kind of based around this idea of like what if we took one of those match 3 apps or something similar and made it into a physical board game. So when you played the actual game there's like this big old box with the shoots and like physical marbles that you're like pulling out and like that's super fun but it's like uh, more of a novelty and it's like probably a lot easier when you have everything laid out in front of you on a table to like parse everything out rather than having to scroll up and down all the time yeah all right um would you want to play some Mancala? Let's let's cool down. Sure. Um, if game. I could just take a minute to run to the bathroom. Yeah, I'll get it set up. Wait, I'll get back. Yeah. Um. Yep, 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 yep. I got um I got an errand to run at seven, so we're gonna have to call the stream after probably a couple games of this, but Mancala is very fast. Uh generally. I know it says estimated duration two point seven days, but that's assuming that we were doing it asynchronous. Uh doing it actually live. Mancala is a very fast game, so it should not should not take too long. How are you guys doing, by the way? I know I, I've I've been very heated in my discussion. Uh, I don't always do that, but when I'm I'm actually talking to someone, it ends up we end up having deep conversations. If you go back and watch the streams I did um, when Andrew was co-hosting back like last summer, yeah, there was a lot more discussion happening then. But like now, uh, a lot of my streams are just solo, which is not too bad. Um, but it's a very different feel. It's it's always interesting to have uh, other people. I want to get my dad involved in these too, but that involves like remembering to text with enough time, because I always forget until like the day before or something. I'm like, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna bug him. Hmm. <sighs> Also, I had an idea. I'm not sure if this is going to be a stream idea or what, but I had an idea of doing basically a hundred games of Oath over a while, like not all at once. That would be ridiculous. That's like three weeks of content. Um, but basically just playing against the Clockwork Prince over time and documenting it to see how a Chronicle specifically that's a hundred games long and has the Clockwork Prince would really turn out. So, I don't know. I might stream that. I haven't really streamed Oath lately because it's very taxing on my computer. Um, maybe I'll just do it as like a Let's Play channel or even just like blog posts. I don't know. Some for the future. I've returned. Hello. All right. I have set Hello. up the game. Thanks for joining me for the stream, by the way. Is there someone here? No, no. I mean, you. Thank you. Oh, me? <laughs> yeah, you are here. <laughs> I forgot about myself. Um, um, yeah, of course. I, this is a lot of fun for me. Yeah, it's... I'm a little low energy today, but... It's all good. I, I, I like having other people for the stream. It always m makes it a more interesting... Um, a more interesting uh, dynamic. 
I had a friend who was like, mm -hmm. I, I was doing like daily streams for a while, and he would like come on as well because he also freelances. Um, and that just kind of fell apart because he just didn't have the energy for it anymore. But, uh, yeah, it's nice. It's also a very f fun warm up for uh what I'm gonna do tomorrow, which I've said I've said on the stream prior to this, so this is not necessarily a reveal to anyone except you, but I'm going to be streaming uh, an entire game in one sitting, basically, in one stream. I mean, I'm going to take breaks. But mm -hmm. uh, it's a game that is estimated at about nine hours. So it's going to be a really long stream. That's intense. Yeah. I think the longest I've gone before is like six hours, which was pretty, pretty rough. But... It, I, I'm excited. I've played the game before. It's like it's supposed to be like a modern send up of like the the Banjo Kazooie Mario sixty four kind of um, collectathon games called A Hat in Time. Oh, that's fun. It's it's a really fun one. It's um, yeah, it's fully voice acted, which is very helpful. I I just decided because like I do a lot of the similar kind of streams that I'm going to start doing one like big marathon stream like the last weekend of uh of the month. And so that's going to be the first one. Um I'm aiming for games that are like between 4 to 16 hours so that I can, you know, 16 hours would be a max so that I can get like a decent yeah. amount of sleep. And then 4 would be a minimum just because like I want it to, there to be a reason why I'm doing it in one stream rather than breaking it up. So four is like long enough that it's not like a regular stream. It's still a special event, but it's short enough that uh, I wouldn't want to do multiple streams because it'd only be like two streams in a row or something. Right. The thing is, too, the estimates are all from this one website, howlongtobeat.com, so that's more like an average. So while it says nine hours, it could go on longer, especially because, like, some parts of this game are kind of tricky. I felt like... Banjo Kazooie was pretty tricky. Yeah, that one. My plan is eventually to do because I've already played all of the Banjo Kazooie games on my stream. Those were like some of the first ones I played, um, just because I knew them so well. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I I do plan to do all of those in this marathon form, and specifically, I plan to hundred percent Banjo Kazooie, like get every single thing you can, in one sitting as like a charity stream. At some point, but oh, cool. I, I want to get an, enough of an audience around it so that if I'm doing a charity stream, there's actually people donating. At the same time, I think there's probably people on Twitch who like look for charity streams, if just because they like to like be a part of that that atmosphere. Yeah, that makes sense. So I don't know. I I I will probably do that as like my third or fourth marathon i guess since i'm gonna be doing one a month i don't know i'm very curious how it's gonna go i i in the grocery order that i'm gonna be picking up in like uh an hour here uh i made sure to get like a bunch of snacks like a bunch like peanut it's... butter crackers and stuff so that i i stay um healthy i don't i don't want to like pass out on stream or something that's a good plan. Yeah. Ah, you won. Win. Let's do best of three, since this game is so short. Yeah. It is actually, it is against Twitch's terms of service to uh, fall asleep on stream. Dang. Yeah, it's because people would, like, 
Because once you start making money on Twitch, the longer you stream, the more you can make. So some people would just basically have it going so long that they would be neglecting their health and staying up way too long and just passing out on stream. And plus, uh, if you're just sleeping and you're not actually giving them content, like it costs money for them to be to maintain the servers to like actually be uploading the video. So if you're not doing anything, that's that's kind of non-content for them. Right. That makes sense. Although I feel like if if it were allowed, there would probably be people who just stream themselves 24-7, including when they're sleeping. Uh, yeah. They definitely would. There was those people, or there was like a couple people on tiktok who were doing uh staying live until things like one person did staying live until my phone dies mm. um, and it was like three months it wasn't that long but it was a long time oh yeah i mean that's i i really like um a lot of of the high concept streams like that where it's just something weird or like a challenge i i'd want to do stuff like that but at the same time, I'm like, I still have to work. I don't know. At the same yeah. time, it's like, if I did stuff like that, I feel like I'd make enough of a brand for myself that I'd be able to make money just off of the stream. So, uh, maybe it's a, it'd be, I, I'd have to go like full in on it is the big thing. Yeah. Um. There was one that I thought was a pretty cool idea uh, recently. I think he finished it now, but he was doing it for a few days. Uh, one of the bigger streamers on the platform, Germa985, he did what he called Germa's Dollhouse, where it was basically he created a set of three rooms that were a little house, and he made himself a sim, basically, like in The Sims. Um... Interesting. And, and the chat got to like vote on stuff. So they got to vote on like, what is he going to do? Is he going to take a shower because his hygiene is super low and he needs to get that back? Or is he going to go for a jog? Or is he like, are we going to buy him stuff? What do we get him? And they, he'd have like stagehands like bring in stuff. Um, In execution, it's it was okay. But like, I like the concept a lot. Yeah, conceptually, that's really cool. Yeah. Overall, it ended up being they just messed with him a lot, which is what you'd expect. Yeah, absolutely. No. I mean, that's what people say. No. Too much. Get me back. <laughs> Um, another thing I'd want to do on here sometime, if I can get enough people in chat, is, uh, Action Castle, which is not exactly a tabletop game. It's basically just a laminated pamphlet, um, where one of you is, uh, basically dungeon mastering a text adventure. <laughs> So, like, you just read out, like, all the text you would have in, like, a text adventure. Whoops. Oh, I didn't see the one there. Ah, crap. Um, so it'd just be like, you are in a cabin. The exits are out and, like, west. And then people have to actually respond like it's a text adventure. And everybody gets one command. So if you say something that just doesn't work then it's just like, sorry, I don't understand that, and then it moves to the next person. Oh, interesting. Oh, did I win? I did. Oh, you All took right. it. One, let's do one tiebreaker, and then I gotta, I gotta go. I got an errand to run. Yeah, I should, I have to finish my, the rest of my chores. Yeah. Most of, through most of them, because I have to wash my bedding every day, every, um, at least, like, every two weeks, uh, because I'm kind of allergic to Caesar, and so I had to do that. 
Yeah, saying I think... it's a But luckily, the apartment I'm moving into has a washer and dryer. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, I think I might be a little allergic to cats as well, but like... What can you do? They're so cute. Uh, it's not... it doesn't affect my, you know... It's gonna keep my cat. Yeah, yeah, that, it's... it's not any kind of option to not have them. Mm. Yeah. I get a, a, air, a air purifier and that helps a little bit too. Mm. Um, that one. Yes. Yeah, I have like a little air purifier. I need to get a bigger one. The dust in here is so ridiculous. Just because, like, we've got two cats and yeah. a dog. That makes sense. Do, 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 do. And not quite. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Do you think you'll watch any part of my ridiculous marathon stream? Uh, what time are you doing it? Uh, basically all day. From like... Nine... I'm gonna start... Try and start, I should say, at like nine my time, which is like six your time, so I don't expect you to catch the beginning. Um, but I'm going to go probably till at least six my time, which is like three your time. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I'll probably catch some of it. Uh, to do an interview with my new apartment manager tomorrow, and I'll be at Dad's for part of the day, so. Mm -hmm. I plan. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just, like, drop uh, in but whenever. But I can... That's not gonna change. Like, I can definitely still watch on my phone. Yeah, it's um, it's gonna be a very yeah, long, it's... very chill stream, so... Whenever you drop in. Come in and say hello. I would appreciate it. Any kind of mm -hmm. Any kind of moral support or company... Cause like I don't know how many people are even gonna watch. <laughs> that's like that's the the bigger thing is like I'm gonna do it. I'm committing to doing it at this point. But like, um, whether or not I even get viewers is still super up in the air. Cause like sometimes I'll get a decent amount right. of viewers. Sometimes I won't. I'm still not sure if streaming for longer does better for you in terms of viewers, or if a shorter stream is more. I don't know. I, I still don't fully get a lot of Twitch stuff. Yeah, there's so much, like, so many little things, it seems like. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's confusing. I've been doing it for over a year now. Off and on, basically. But, like... Oh, oh crap, I should have protected that. Oh, no. Oh no. But like I still don't feel like I have a full grasp on it. And it like it's it always goes in weird waves where I like I get into one particular game for a while. Like I was I was doing Pokemon for a while trying to catch catch them all as they say. Um <laughs> and like I built up a lot of followers from that. But then like when I put that to the side for a bit it's like a lot of them aren't watching now because they were here for pokemon ah you won overall <laughs> and then i was playing like oath which is like my favorite board game with people and so a lot of people who are in the oath community were watching but now i haven't done that and like i get some of them watching these streams because it's board games and they're just into general board games but like i don't know it's it's they're very fickle the audience but whatever um, i i just enjoy streaming because it gives me an excuse to to play games and talk which are two of my favorite things 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a good time. Absolutely. Chill. It's a pretty good chill time. Thanks for thanks for joining me for this stream. That'll do it for tonight. I hope you have a great rest of your night. I hope you had a fun time. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I'll talk. I'll well, I'm sure I'll talk to you over the. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get week, Dad in but... in in for next week. Maybe Satch as well. Um. I also gotta get Satch to give me his answer for the choose your own adventure thing. I don't know. I might just pull the I'll be the tiebreaker thing again and get it moving. But I, I checked it yesterday, um, and it's been like two weeks <laughs> since I asked. Wondering, yeah, it's been a while. Oh well, um, <laughs> I I might just drop in a reminder or something. Good. I don't know, but yeah, you have a great um, rest of your night, rest of your weekend. I'm gonna do my outro here. Thank you. Good. You too. Good luck with your chores and your interview and all that. Thank you. I'm sure it's gonna go great. I will talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right. And now that they're gone, I will uh, say goodbye to you folks as well. Thank you for uh, watching. If you did, I've had the one viewer, which I always appreciate. Whoever it is, there's always at least one person lurking. Most streams. Some streams I don't get it, so I don't know quite how it works. That might just be the app registering as that. Um, I tried a different lighting setup, so I have light in the back. And I'm getting a new light tomorrow. So when I do, whenever I, I whenever it comes in and whenever I like take a break during my marathon stream I'm gonna be doing, I'll set it up here and see how it works out. But uh yeah, thanks you for watching. Thanks for inviting me into your home, computer, tablet, laptop, gaming console, Roku, Apple TV, however it is you watch today, whether it was in the past, the present, or the future with the uh, past broadcast tab or Iggy Kid Twitch Archive, which is three words, Iggy Kid Twitch Archive on YouTube. It's linked down below on the browser version, it has all of my past streams except like various test ones or like disaster ones that just didn't go well i i deleted a few of them but almost all of them are there like 99 percent um you can also find iggy in the ape where i post movie reviews and other stuff you know check all of that out uh follow me on twitter at iggy d kid where i post when i go live post new videos post all sorts of stuff it's a fun time and uh yeah please join me tomorrow if you could for that marathon stream it's going to be going all day you know so it's it's gonna be uh it's gonna be quite the experience i'm sure but i'm gonna be doing those every month from now on and tomorrow's ahead in time so that should be fun i like that game um but yeah thanks again for watching and hey if no one else has told you this i'll tell you this you're a good kid thanks for watching let me see if anybody is uh streaming right now to raid you guys over to let's see let's see uh oh come on come on there we go. There's my ending slate. All right, let's see if anybody's streaming that I know. Channels recommended for me. Renegade Games. Hmm. Nobody I know right now. Um, All these people are, like, way above my pay grade, so they are probably not going to accept my raid. Oh, well. Uh, Have a good weekend, everybody. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow for that marathon stream. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.